Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about the benefits of Moringa and some ways that you can use it. And this is some Moringa powder I have right here. I just added this to this jar. This is a new package. Now, what Moringa is, it is a tree that's native to Africa, Asia, and India, though I know people here in the U.S. are growing it. I do think it tends to like dry, hot climates better than climates like ours that are cooler and very, very, very wet. So I have tried growing it, and I couldn't even get the seeds to sprout, but I may try again and at least try to see if I can grow it in a pot in the greenhouse. So the nutrients, let's go over this. One thing about Moringa that just makes it such a, a great herb for so many things is that it is just packed full of nutrients. And those would be vitamins A, B2, B6, C, and E. And the thing about the C, it is said to have more vitamin C than an orange. Now, I don't know what that measurement what would be, if that's an equivalent measurement by weight of Moringa leaf to orange, but regardless, that's what it is said. Um, some minerals, potassium, magnesium, calcium, iron, and for a plant, it's pretty high in protein. It also contains quercetin, chlorogen acid, and amino acids. And now let's talk about the benefits. It's good at helping to lower blood sugar, which means this is a great herb or even vegetable. You can use it as a vegetable for diabetics. It helps to reduce inflammation and is also a good analgesic. It's helpful at lowering cholesterol. It is a natural antiviral and antibacterial and antiseptic. It's good for heart health and helps to treat and prevent various types of cancers. It's helpful for arthritis. It balances hormones and thus is also good for those with PMS or going through menopause. It's great for thyroid health and it protects the liver and is also good at detoxifying the body. So it can work hand in hand with the liver. So protecting the liver, but also helping the liver in its function at detoxification. It improves digestion and supports brain health, which means it's helpful at preventing or treating conditions such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and dementia. It is anti aging and energy boosting. It improves bone health and is beneficial at increasing lactation in nursing mothers, but please note that should be the leaves only. If you're pregnant or nursing, you should not be using any other part of the Moringa but the leaves themselves. And that's the part that's most commonly used anyway. Uh, it's good for weight management and it's beneficial to skin and hair health. Very good for the nervous system. As we can see, anything is going to be good for brain health is typically going to be good for just the overall nervous system anyway. It has been used as a treatment for malaria and typhoid fever and is also very good at preventing diseases of the eye. So I just would say eye health in general. So now let's talk about the ways that you can use Moringa. Like a lot of your most common ways that people are going to try to add it to get more, to get it into their diet would be in the form of teas, smoothies. You can make a tincture or an extract out of it. You can encapsulate it to take it that way. You can add it to soups, salads, breads, cakes, cookies, and pastas. Now the pasta is one thing I have done. I've done it in a few other things, but I haven't used it much in recent years, so I can't remember what all I've used it in, but I do know I've used it in pasta to color it. So I did, I'll put a picture here where I was experimenting. I was making a bunch of homemade pasta. I was using various natural things that I already had on hand and powdered up, and that was like tomato powder, moringa powder. And you'll see that right in the center there. The darker green is spirulina. The really dark one is activated charcoal. I have encapsulated it before, but the one thing I remember using it specifically for was making a pain reliever for my dog. And so I did a recipe quite a number of years ago that I found to be very effective. So Cody and his sister would get to play in pretty rough sometimes and he would end up spraining something or injuring something. And when I would give him this pain reliever, which included turmeric as well as moringa, 
it was very helpful. Within 20 minutes, he would be back to playing with his sister again. So I'll link to that video down below on the pain reliever for your dogs. So really, um, I wish I could say I've used it in many more things, but I haven't. It's one of those herbs that I bought and started using and then forgot about. And then just, you know, even though I meant to start incorporating it more things, I just haven't. But after reading more about the benefits again, I am going to try to look at ways at incorporating it more into the various things I make. Now, one question I tend to get a lot whenever I talk about the benefits of any kind of herb or spices, well, what about dosing? Well, the reason I don't typically give exact doses is because each person's going to be different. It's funny how when we're using herbs for flavoring things and using them as vegetables, we don't think about dosing. But when we think of it as a medicinal thing, suddenly the amount we're taking becomes very critical. Well, uh, I will say that Moringa, generally speaking, is the Moringa leaf is safe for everyone. The all, though all parts of the plant are used, I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, pregnant nursing women need to stay away from any other part because you can use the root, the flowers, the seeds, and the bark, but those should be avoided if you're pregnant and nursing, which would tell me that that should be something you look into for yourself. Any herb or spice can be taken in excess when we're talking about taking it medicinally because when people start looking at something medicinally, they usually start taking it in bigger doses or in stronger solutions than they would when they're just throwing it into a meal. So for example, people cook with moringa leaf, like they might make a moringa leaf salad or might throw the moringa leaf into stir fries. So there's many ways that you can use it. And when I'm, when you're looking at using it that way, I personally wouldn't concern myself so much about dosage. But if you're encapsulating it or buying it in capsule form or tincturing it, then that is something you need to look into. So there is a per certain part of this that each person has to take their own personal responsibility because here's the thing about any natural herb, spice, root, whatever, that is used medicinally is that it shouldn't be combined with certain medications. So you have to look into each of those things yourself. For example, because Moringa powder is good at boosting the thyroid and helping balance cholesterol and hormones, if you are on medications for any of those things, the Moringa powder will make those medications ineffective or when taken together might be too much. So maybe you're trying to give your thyroid a boost. Maybe you're already on thyroid medication and you're adding Moringa to that. That could be too much and maybe send you into hyperthyroidism. So that should get you thinking. Um, wouldn't it be better off just to go with something that's more natural and try to get yourself off the medications like we did with the thyroid medication? I think that was probably why I started getting Moringa, but with so many herbs and spices I was adding to help with our thyroid uh, over 10 years ago when we went off our medication, it, it's just one of those that got forgotten. <laughs> just trying to be creative and remember all the things and add them in. Um, sometimes it's easy to forget, but now that I've studied up on it again, I will be looking at incorporating it into more things. Other than the pasta picture and the dog, re the dog pain reliever, all the other food related pictures I've shared were ones I collected from the internet. Those aren't anything I have done, but please share with us in comments down below. How have you used Moringa? How have you used it medicinally? And when you've done that, what were your personal doses? Again, this is going to vary per person. And you should always, by the way, I meant to say earlier, start small if you're using it medicinally and work your way up. You should be that way with anything, be it starting with a quarter of a teaspoon and then working up to a teaspoon. Some things you can go up to a whole teaspoon, a whole tablespoon per day, but not all things like nut, nutmeg, you shouldn't take that much per day. And the same thing applies to any of your herbs like this but also share with us other ways that you've used it in cooking and baking as far as the Moringa goes, be it the powder, the fresh leaf, or the dried leaf in its more whole form. And I almost forgot to say this, but when you go to shop for your Moringa, I'll link to this one, but I'm also gonna put a link 
for just organic moringa in general that you can search through and what you want to look at is try to avoid look for organic and make sure it's moringa leaf powder and try to avoid anything look at the origin it's from try to avoid anything and this goes for any herb or spice that comes from china india and other such places because this is where this is commonly going to come from is fine just avoid anything that comes from china all right well i hope you enjoyed this video and please check out my full playlist that i've been working on for well over six years now where i do an herb profile breaking down the benefits and uses of various different medicinal herbs a lot of them were ones i grow already but not all some of them i'm still working on trying to get them growing and others i just stock up on like the moringa cloves nutmeg and more all right well thanks for watching take care and god bless <music>